In eastern Africa, just northeast of Ethiopia and on the coast of the Red Sea, lies the tiny nation known as the Republic of Djibouti. Only the size of New Jersey or North Macedonia, and with not even a million people, this little nation has an outsized role in world geopolitics. Djibouti might be small, but it is hardly the butt of any jokes, as nations attempt to further spread out their- Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna keep making butt jokes, I can make my own jokes here. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Djibouti's outsized importance in global geopolitics, like many in its circumstance, can be drawn pretty much entirely to its location. Djibouti is located not far from one of the busiest and most important waterways in the world, sought after by different nations ever since people started using it for world trade. That waterway is the Suez Canal, around 1600 kilometers to the north, but Djibouti also sits right beside another important waterway, one perhaps equally important to this part of the world, the Bab al Mandab Strait. As basically every ship passing through the Suez Canal will also likely pass through the Bab al Mandab Strait, maybe unless they're stopping in Sudan or Saudi Arabia or somewhere like that, securing the security of the strait securely is imperative for countries all around the world, especially considering the two other countries along the strait include Yemen and Eritrea, with Somalia not far away, none of whom are exactly famous for their stability. Thus, to most of the international community, the strait might as well only be 20 kilometers wide, the area within Djibouti's territorial waters. Largely because of Djibouti's relative stability in the region, the country has become a magnet for different countries looking to build military bases in the area. By the way, normally I'd fill these gaps in with stock footage, but I actually couldn't find any of Djibouti that I could actually afford, so I'm just gonna Atlas Pro it and go on camera every now and then. Currently, as of October 2021, China, France, Italy, Japan, Saudi Arabia, and the United States all hold some form of military presence within the country's borders, with the French bases also housing Italian and German troops, and the US's Camp Lamonier also holding British troops. The Baba Mandab Strait, however, isn't the only reason so many foreign powers have built in these military bases in the country. The country also lies within 1,500 kilometers of hotspots like Yemen, Somalia, and South and Sudan. It is largely for this reason the U.S. has rented out Camp Lamonie, just beside the Djibouti International Airport, since 2002. Somali piracy, of course, is also one of the main concerns within the region. With Somalia's lack of a stable central government, and thus a navy to protect its waters, leading to local fishermen needing to band together to protect themselves, with some groups eventually realizing the profitability of charging ransoms, leading to where we are today with potentially vulnerable sea lanes. Okay, I guess that was a brief explanation as to how the problem started. Probably way oversimplified, but still. China, however, has also built a base here, within just 6 kilometers of the US base. This creates the somewhat awkward situation where the United States and many of its closest allies may find themselves with military bases in the same country or even the same city as a Chinese base. What? The PLA just moved in next door! Now they can spy on us from less than 9,000 washing machines away! Maybe we can also spy on them? We can also see them from here, you know? I think you might be onto something. China's stated aim with the base, though, is to combat the aforementioned threat of piracy in the Gulf of Aden to the south and protect the oh-so-important Baba Mandab Strait. The PLA, People's Liberation Army, base is China's first permanent military base outside China, which alongside all the investments in different infrastructure projects in the region, all helped to solidify China's economic and political influence in Africa. One of the most notable for Djibouti being the railway connecting it to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Djibouti's presence also cannot be overstated for neighboring Ethiopia. As I discussed in another award running video of mine, Djibouti is effectively landlocked Ethiopia's easiest access point to the sea. Now, there are so many more anatomical jokes I can make here, but I can behave myself. With the completion of the largely Chinese-built Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway in 2018, the railway has, thus far, not lived up to its promised potential. However, as Ethiopia's population continues to skyrocket over the next several decades, many say this railway could be a boon to Djibouti, as effectively the gateway to Ethiopia. The real question is, though, given its strategic location and obvious importance in world trade, and hence all the countries willing to work with them, why is Djibouti not one of the richest countries in this part of the world? 41% of Djibouti's population lives in poverty, with 23% living in extreme poverty. So in a sense what I'm asking is, why are they not basically just a carbon copy of Singapore? Djibouti's location is, in a sense, its only real economic asset. 
The country's dry, arid climate leaves a scant 0.04% of its land area being arable. In addition, the country's two largest clans, the Afars and the Isas, fought a bloody civil war from 1991 to 94, which destroyed much of the agricultural infrastructure within the nation. In a sense, if the country were located basically anywhere but this specific point, very few people would actually want anything to do with it. Despite this, Djibouti ultimately wants to become the Dubai of Africa, and with their economy set to grow by 9% in 2021, the country does seem poised to make use of their strategic position. However, its position hasn't not posed certain risks and downsides for the country. President Ismail Omar Ghaleh is currently in power in his fifth term in office, having first assumed power in 1999, and has been accused of being a dictator, known to jail opposition leaders and expel foreign observers. With this, many criticize much of what we talked about, and particularly Galay's seeking of closer ties to China, as all going more towards stabilizing the current regime rather than the country itself. In addition, with so many of the world's most powerful countries being allowed by Galay's government to host military bases in this oh-so-important region, which would be extremely difficult otherwise, many say these countries have a vested interest in maintaining the status quo. Either way, in the coming decades, people are definitely going to be looking a lot at Djibouti. Come on! Nice, uh, ship you got, by the way. Oh yeah, you like these backdrops? I actually learned how to make them with a Skillshare course by Siobhan Tommy. Uh, background design, art for animation. <laughs> you built this spaceship with Skillshare? Sure, I mean, Skillshare's a whole dedicated learning community with thousands of courses on everything from videography to graphic design to After Effects to starting your own business. Who are you talking to? And also, since the internet out here in deep space is kinda crappy, what with the communication delay and all that, I could actually download the courses and save them for later. And what's better is Skillshare is entirely curated for learning, so no ads or anything like that. Okay, can you just drop me off on Luna or somewhere like that? Look, do you want to find Sam or not? Okay, fine, continue. And besides, in terms of how long the courses are, in my opinion, they're actually perfectly balanced, as all things should be, because they're all long enough to cover basically everything you need to know, but also divided into little 5-10 to 10 minute chapters just in case you don't happen to have all the time in the solar system. Plus, it's also interactive, because a lot of the courses have projects that you can use to follow along with lessons. How long did you say it would take with the Brack Drive? 5-6 days? Yeah, we still got a bit of a ways to go. I mean, we're not even traveling at full G, see? Actually, now that I think about it, it does sound like a good way to pass the time before Mars. See? I knew I could get you into it. I'd recommend you sign up by going to the link in the description and using the coupon code Canubis, and that way you can get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium, but only if you're one of the first 1,000 to do so. Okay, who were you talking to though? <laughs> 